Hi, this is Byron Walker. I'm glad you made it this far. Um, in this video, I'm going to share with you the 10 action steps uh, to start your turnaround in your business right now. Uh, worth mentioning, each one of these steps is probably, you know, an hour presentation by itself. Um, and so keep that in mind as, why, as I blaze through this list very quickly um, so I don't make this video too long for you. Um, but stick with me, listen to the podcast, look for upcoming uh, events and things that I'm doing, and you'll be able to dive into more of this uh, as we move through it. All right, so uh, number one, take care of yourself. Um, it might seem obvious, but um, you know, you really do need to take care of yourself and your body. Um, I personally went through a massive downturn in my business for the last few years and have made it out the other side uh, as of mid-year uh, 2018. We've been profitable, but up to that point, it's hell. It sucks. I get it. So you do need to take care of your mind and your body. Um, as a friend told me uh, at one point, he says, Byron, uh, we're going to need you when this is all done. And so that really stuck with me, meaning I've, I've got to take care of myself. I've got to be there for my family and my friends after uh, this is all done and be healthy and, and clear in my head. Um, one thing that you'll probably fall into, I know I do all the time, is I don't have time. I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time to work out, whatever it is. Um, but I will tell you, um, like meditation, for example, if I just do the 15 minutes a day uh, like I intend to, it's, it saves me one or two hours in productivity uh, throughout the day. So I'm way more efficient, way more productive if I take that 15 minutes. I get that 15 minutes back in spades. Uh, same with working out, going for walks, whatever it is. Take care of yourself. Uh, we're going to need you when this is all done. Number two, improve cash flow. Okay, Cash is king. We know that. So you need to take actionable steps right now to improve your cash standing. Um, to clarify, cash is not profit. Uh, they are two very different things. They sound similar, but they're not. Um, in fact, some of the strategies that I teach may actually hurt profits, okay? Um, but uh, you'll have more cash in the bank. So I'm gonna talk about profits uh, here shortly, but for right now, this is just about having cash in the bank. So a few uh, steps that you can take. Number one, collect on your accounts receivable faster. And um, so this means making sure you get your money when it's due. That being said, you might actually wanna get your money before it's due. In uh, a falling economy or where there's other market forces in your industry, you may wanna consider actually taking money that someone owes you sooner for a discount. Whatever it is, make sure you're strong as can be on your accounts receivable. That's cash that your business needs. And remember that some other businesses that owe you money may also be struggling. And so you need to be strategic on getting that cash in the door. Um, pay, the next one is pay slower on accounts payable. So it's just the opposite, right? Your goal is to spread out the payments that you need to make or if you owe a certain amount to create a payment plan. Uh, you could also negotiate with someone that you owe money with to take less than what's owed, but that they get their money quicker. And again, in a down economy, they may take you up on that, okay? Um, but I wouldn't pay it all off at once. Cash is king, even with a big discount. So um, negotiate what you need to, but really slow down the accounts payable, what's going out the door. Uh, the next one is hoard cash. Okay, use your credit cards to pay for things instead of cash. Um, and next one is sell what you don't need. Um, when I was going through my downturn, we, we sell physical products um, on the internet, survival gear. And so my business may be different than yours, but for me, we had some inventory that wasn't selling very well that we'd had for years. And we liquidated that at discounted prices. Again, that hurt our profit and it hurt our profit margins but it helped with cash flow. So sell what you don't need. Um, this also goes for anything that's not uh, um, nailed down to the floor. So we actually did a garage sale and sold all kinds of our office stuff, furniture, you name it, we sold it, we needed cash, we got it. Um, there's a lot of financing options right now. Um, this, you know, there's government stimulus, uh, PPP, you know, the grants, which I'll cover in just a moment. 
um, but there are finance options both uh, through the government and outside. Just you know, regular banks doing lines of credit. Lines of credit for a business is not that hard to get. Um, you'll probably have to use your own personal social security number, and if you default, that will come back on you. However, it usually doesn't show up on your credit report as you know outstanding debt. So look into that. Lines of credit for businesses are fairly easy to get. Uh, last is investors. Um, getting cash from investors uh, obviously it has its ups, you know pros and cons to that, um, but another source, and then your own cash. And again. Plenty of pros and cons with that. Be careful. You have to really consider a lot when you're putting your own cash into the deal. But you know, if sometimes it just makes sense. So improve your cash flow now. Um, number three on the list: uh, focus on profitable revenue. Okay. Um, if you're like most companies uh, and you have different revenue channels, hopefully you have several different revenue channels because that's you know, a sign of a healthy business. But look at each one. Do a rough P&L per revenue channel. This is difficult to do, but you can do it and just round off, get rough numbers. You're just going for rough you know, math here. Um, but analyze each revenue channel. And then consider the possibility of cutting some of your lower margin revenue channels. Okay. Yeah, if, when I did that, I, I did all the math and came up with one revenue channel that was about 5% profit margin at best. And it was, you know, once I dug into it further, by the way, it wasn't, it was break even. Uh, and then I looked into it further and it wasn't even break even, it was losing money. My point is, is find those lower uh, margin channels and consider cutting them. Okay. Now that sounds weird as your as all your revenue is coming down lower and lower and it's scaring the crap out of you. Why would you want to cut revenue by choice? Well, just consider it. Doesn't mean you have to do it, but which one, which revenue channel would you cut? Because you may find that uh, that revenue channel actually costs you money or you lose money. And uh, by cutting it, you may simplify your business and greatly cut the costs. And I did that. I cut off uh, a huge chunk of my revenue and my profits went up. My top line went down, but who cares, right? So um, look at the profitable revenue channels, super important. And then um, also, which one is your most profitable or the highest margin revenue channel? And two things that you want to look at there. One, how can you increase the profit margin even further? Okay, there's probably some tweaks to it that you can do to increase that margin as a percentage upwards. And then second is how can you increase the actual revenue itself? Okay, how much, how can you increase that revenue coming in with more sales? Number four, increase revenue. Okay. Um, so there's really only three ways to increase revenue. And I know your head's probably spinning and thinking of all these ideas. Well, it really just comes down to three things. So this is pretty simple. Number one, you get more customers or more sales, more transactions. Okay. And that's typically done through marketing or sales and you're pushing an idea and you're getting more people to buy from you. Number two, this is when you sell more to each customer. Okay, so this isn't more transactions. This is the same number of sales, but each sale has a higher dollar value or average order value goes up. This can be done by adding, you know, having add-ons or um, uh, upsells, things like this. And then the third one is repeat customers. So that's getting the previous customer to come back and buy more from you. And this is the easiest and cheapest sale you will ever have. So really look at your list, your buyer's list, your customer's list. How can you work with that more? How can you squeeze more out of it? How can you get those people to come back and buy more from you? Um, because that's far more efficient than going out and getting new customers, which is the first one we talked about. So those are the only three. Now, word of warning here. Um, don't rely on this to work. You, uh, you should have a game plan for increasing revenue, okay? And put a lot of effort into it. However, what if it doesn't work? What I don't want you to do is to rely on this to save your business. You need to look at all the other things, co cost cutting and whatnot that you're gonna do and then factor in for this not to work. So what if your revenue didn't go up a dollar? 
okay, even though you're trying really hard, will you survive at that new lower level? Okay, so increase revenue, but don't rely on it. You need to have a plan of action without revenue going up. Okay, instead of increasing revenue, you need to come down, meet the market to where it's at, and you should be at break even or profitability at that point there. All right, now the fun stuff uh, cut expenses now. Now, this really should be at the top of the list, okay, probably number one. But if I put it there, you probably wouldn't have read number two. So it's down here, but this is super, super important, of course. You know, you got to re realize for every $1 of expenses that you cut, it's $1 that's going to the bottom line, okay, to profitability or towards break even. So it's a one to one dollar ratio, which is super powerful. Where if you think about revenue, it's a little different. If you increase your revenue or your sales, by $1, you're not getting a dollar of profit, okay? You've got overhead, you've got expenses, you've got product costs, whatever it is, it adds up. So you may add $1 of extra revenue and only get you know, 30 or 40 or 50 cents to the bottom line. Cutting costs is super effective of getting back to break even. So what I would challenge you to do today is to find two expenses that you can cut from your business today. If you've already done this in the past, do it again. Find two today that you can cut. This momentum will help you. Now, list out all of your expenses on a spreadsheet, okay? Every single one. This is not a small project, and you'll need some help for this, but you need to list out every single expense, monthly, quarterly, annually, whatever, okay? List them all out, and then color code them, okay? Red is for expenses that you can cut. Uh, yellow is for expenses that you probably can't cut or maybe can, not sure, somewhere in between. And then uh, green is for the expenses that you have to keep. These are critical to your you know, running your business. Okay, The red ones that you're going to cut, cut them now. Okay, it takes time to reduce those expenses on your financials. Um, if you Cancel now, it may be 30 days before it doesn't rebuild. Or maybe you've got you know, a three month term or whatever. Cancellation policies, all this add up. So the sooner you can do this, the sooner you'll see the benefits. It's not like a light switch. You're cutting costs now, so you can reap the rewards in one month, two months, three months down the road. Start now. Um, the yellow, that's the tricky one because you may think that you can't get rid of it. Well, just keep it in the yellow, find a way, and ask yourself, what if? What if I was to cut that? What would that look like? And there are some painful decisions in that yellow that you're going to have to walk through. And then the green, I also challenge you to examine that one and see, are there any in there that should maybe be pushed over to yellow? Okay. A great example is I had rent for my warehouse, my employee office and all that in the green. It's critical infrastructure. I can't get rid of that, right? Well, I can and I did. So I moved it into yellow and then eventually I moved it into red. We went virtual. I moved all my fulfillment out to 3PL uh, Fulfillment Center. It made its way into red. So really look at that green with critical eyes and just put it in the yellow. Okay, because it could probably survive in there and you might cut it in the future. Doesn't mean you will, but you need to really take a hard look at every expense and see what you can do about that. Okay, number six here, employee rankings. I wasn't sure what to name this one, um, but this is also not a fun one. You need to list all of your employees on a spreadsheet. Uh, all of your contractors, uh, agencies you work with, uh, and then rate them. Uh, red, yellow, green. Red are ones that, again, don't assume if they're in the red, you're going to fire them tomorrow. Okay, But you need to put the people in red that you would let go first. And then it, I would take all of those employees, contractors, agencies, and then divide it by three. And you need, you've got three buckets, red, yellow, green. And you need to put a third into the red, okay? Hard decisions, but you have to do it. Uh, no choice in the matter, do it. Um, and then put the list away, okay? Um, we'll come back to that after you've dove into your financials and your P&L forecast, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, this is a sensitive subject, but it is what it is, right? Um, 
So uh, put them into three buckets, red, yellow, and green, and uh, make some tough decisions in there. Um, then I want you to, number seven, define your challenge, okay? Really go deep on this. Um, it's like if you were to explain your situation and your company's situation um, to a stranger who didn't know about your business or your industry, what would you say? And by the way, you don't need to write this out in paragraph form, just bullet point it, okay? It's talking points that you would share with a friend. Um, and then I want you to go share it with a friend, okay, and get feedback and um, get some ideas. But the idea is define the challenge completely, put it on paper, then step back. Because if all this is in your head, your idea of how to fix the company, if that sits in your head, you're in trouble, okay? Your head is spinning, you're tired, you're emotional, everything's going to shit, right? So you need to put it on paper and then come back to it tomorrow and be objective by reading it. It is powerful to be able to read what your notes are a day after. And again, share it with friends and get feedback from them. Number eight, SWAT. Um, so SWAT your business. So that stands for um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, strengths. Um, now, I don't want you to do this. Uh, normally, a SWAT is done on the business and the characteristics of it. I actually want you to do this on your business and its current situation and the downturn that you're facing in particular. Okay. So strengths. How are you well positioned for a turnaround? What do you have going on with your company that actually will help you? In other words, you know, we have good management staff or we've already cut costs, whatever it is. What are the strengths that your company has so it can weather the storm? Okay, you've got a lot of competition, I'm sure. Why are you going to survive in where some of your competitors won't? What are your strengths? Second part, weaknesses. The opposite, where are you weak and where could it hurt you? Okay, just be honest. If you know your weaknesses, then you can be strategic about, you know, not taking blows and uh, getting hurt by them. Third one, opportunity. This is a tough one, but I really want you to go deep with this one, okay? Uh, by the way, you may wanna go grab a, have a few drinks before you do this one, but this is a very powerful exercise. How could this become a good thing for your business in a few years? How could all of what's happening actually be good for you and your business in a few years? <laughs> okay, that's the trick because your head will come up with all kinds of clutter if you try to go short term on this. So two or three years from now, how could you look back and say, yeah, I mean, it sucked, it was awful, but I'm actually glad that my business went through that because now we're better because of X, Y, Z. So what is the opportunity? You know, for example, you'll have fewer competition if you survive this. Um, you have a stronger team. You probably have more efficiencies in your business. Your profit margin could double. Whatever it is, um, it will be healthier if you make it to the other side. So what are the opportunities with the situation that you're facing? And then threats. What outside forces could threaten your business? Okay. So this could be anything from getting sued or accounts receivable not being collected or your bank calls your line of credit or your suppliers go out of business or cut you off, whatever, right? What are the external factors that could hurt you? All right, number nine, government stimulus money. Um, I'm not gonna go into it here. I'll give you some links and some resources. Um, there's a lot of information and it's all changing daily as I'm reading this right now, which is April 7th. <laughs> 2020. So, uh, but the PPP uh, and the grants that are out there, these are amazing tools for um, entrepreneurs to be tapping into and you should do that. Number 10, develop your turnaround plan. Okay. This isn't just going to happen by itself. You have to develop and then take action on a specific turnaround plan. What's your plan? Okay. Um, then, you know, document it, Put it down. How can you get feedback from friends? Um, what podcasts or books uh, can you learn from? If you can double down on learning right now, that's critical. Okay, you need to develop your step-by-step -step action plan and execute it. Okay, and I will say this too: your goal is not to wait for the market to return. It's not to 
hopefully to stretch it out just in time for the market to return and then you recover and you go back up. You need to cut your costs now to meet the current market. Okay, get to break even or profitability, but get it there right away. Cut your costs to the new revenue that you'll see for the next three months, six months, 12, whatever it is. Get there, get break even, and then wait for the market to return. Okay, you'll be so much stronger because of it. Your profits will be so much better when the market does come back. Your goal isn't to wait this thing out, it's to cut costs, get to break even right away. Okay, develop this turnaround plan. Um, number 11, yeah, I know I'm going over, but I uh, want to throw a few more ideas at you. PL forecast. So, what this is, is forecasting the different turnaround plans in those scenarios and what they may look like going forward. Don't put it in your head. Don't come up with these ideas and see, you know, just try to roll them out because you, you know it'll help, but you don't know how much it'll help. No, no, no. You need to get it on a spreadsheet. And so, what you want to do is take your current PL and put it into an Excel document and then take that and cut the revenue from that PL down to where the market is now or where it could go in the near future. Okay. Now you do that, then go ahead and scroll to the bottom and look at the profit and loss. Let that scare the shit out of you for a moment because you're losing tons of money, right? All right. Now go back up and find the big buckets, the big amounts in your expenses that you can reduce or eliminate. Your goal is to, after you've cut the revenue, then to get down and be a break even, and you're gonna have to cut the cost. Now, don't think too much about this. If you know you need to cut your labor by a third, don't fret about how the heck you're gonna even make that work, right? Just cut the number. This isn't where you do that, okay? Don't focus on the how, just focus on the what. What does labor need to look like? What do your expenses need to look like? What do your margins need to look like? What are all those moving parts? And put those in there until you get to break even. And then later, you're gonna figure out how you're gonna execute that. But for right now, this is just a math equation. You're just running numbers and you can do several PL forecasts. In other words, well, if I implement, you know, idea number one, well, this is what that PL might look like. Or if I implement, implement idea number two, for the turnaround plan, this is what that may look like. Uh, or what if I did both and this is the third one. You can do five, 10, 20 different, you know, forecasted P&Ls, whatever you want, whatever you need to. And your goal is just to see what the numbers look like. It doesn't even mean you're going to execute on it. Just come up with a few different plans and then again, sleep on it, come back to it next day, share it with a friend and figure out which forecast makes the most sense. The number 12, one more, this last one, um, use stopgap for difficult decisions. The turnaround is hard, okay? No easy, no easy way to get through this. There are some very difficult conversations and very difficult decisions that you are gonna have to make over the next few months and even the next year. And some of those decisions you're gonna to wanna to put off and not do, and it's human nature, totally normal. But what you can do is come up with the plan and then have a stopgap in place. In other words, if you know, you know, one of the future PL forecasts that you did is cut your labor costs by half, whatever that is, right? Um, and but you can't do that, you can't act on it yet. Well, that's okay, put a stopgap in for place. In other words, if you can say, if I, then I will do this. So if I lose over X dollars in the next month, then I will cut this cost or reduce the staff or whatever that might be. Put those scenarios in place. And now the stopgap will help you because if you don't have that trigger, to remind you, oh yeah, this is when I said I would make this difficult decision. It just keeps getting kicked down the road, okay? So you need to have that stop gap to really force you on these tough decisions. All right, that's it. Top 10 ideas, actually 12. Hopefully you got some ideas. Again, I could talk about all these for hours and hours. So stay tuned, uh, plug into the podcast, um, look for other events that we have coming up and um, we'll keep sharing these ideas and uh, help you with your personal turnaround plan. Thanks.